And one in five New Yorkers really struggle with mental health issues. And the Mayor's Thrive NYC initiative has more than 30 programs offering services to those who so need it. First Lady Mich Shirlane McRae spearheaded Thrive NYC. And just last week, she launched a podcast focused on mental health and wellness. And she's joining us this morning to share what she really hopes to accomplish with this new platform. So good morning to you. Good morning. You know, I'm a big proponent of always bringing mental health issues to the forefront. And a podcast is a new way mm -hmm. to reach out. You go where the people are. So That's tell me about right. the podcast. Well, thank you. Thank you for your enthusiasm and for inviting me today on the show. Uh, we want to reach people where they are. Uh, young people especially are listening to podcasts. We know that the more people uh, hear conversations, people telling their personal stories, it makes them more comfortable with the topic and they're more likely to talk to their own family members. And you brought your own family members on. You brought Dante yeah. on for one of your yes. inaugural episodes. Mm -hmm. so we the podcast was called Keeping It Within the Family. Mm -hmm. And so it was perfect to have him interview me um, about my experiences, our experiences. So how often will, will this be recorded? Uh, the podcast will run, it'll be monthly, um, although we did launch the, the first two together. And we hope to have a steady stream of people from all different backgrounds and perspectives talking about mental health from their own perspective. And that's what I want people to understand, that it's okay mm -hmm. to talk about these kind of issues. This podcast, by the way, will be funded, of course, through the Thrive NYC budget, which I want to get into a bit because back in 2015 is when this launched. It immediately came under fire <sighs> for the funding issues and a, what people were calling a lack of transparency as to where the money was going to help everybody. Well, I got to stop you there because this podcast is not costing us any money because we have this partnership with BRIC um, and because it's providing training opportunities for young people no there's no cost okay so let's get into the actual budget for thrive nyc though right. because you know it is a billion dollar price tag right now just yesterday mm -hmm. scott stringer actually came out and added thrive nyc to his watchful uh list so i want to play what he said yesterday and then get your reaction all right last june thrive published a list of outcome measures that they promised to begin reporting publicly by the end of last year nothing has been released it should not take this long to produce metrics. So to help people understand, with a billion dollar price tag, mm -hmm. it's a lot of taxpayer money that's going behind this yes. initiative right now. Yes. So what metrics are being used and what's the delay in getting the results out there? Well, first of all, there is no delay. Uh, uh, Scott asked for a very special set of measures, which is due next month. I think that he is doing a little bit of grandstanding here. Um, and I think it's important for people to realize it's not like a billion dollars all at once. It's $250,000 over, over a, pe a period of four years. Very different from, um, you know, getting a big pot of money all at once. And the other thing I want people to realize is that uh, Thrive is just a small part of our mental health system. Thrive was launched to fill in the gaps, to launch innovative programs, because we knew, we knew when we got into office that that's right, but mental health was not being addressed in the way that it needs to right, be addressed. Right, but the last time that you were here on the morning show as well, mm -hmm. which was in May of 2019, you said mm -hmm. you were going to have a way to yes. measure the metrics right now. And we now. do, yeah we so, do. So t t give me yes. some of the numbers then on how many people you have been able to help move, uh, with, well, with a number of programs. I'm not gonna give you the numbers on this show because that would take too long. We have more than 30 programs. We are reaching hundreds of thousands of people. But is there a way people can access those it, numbers it will to be see? On, it's online. It is. It will yes. be online, or it, it is. It is, and it will be. Yes. Um, because Scott Stringer is not the only person either. So, for la for example, last year a homeless individual killed four people in Chinatown, mm -hmm. and, and Corey Johnson had come out and said that there are a number of people that you see on the subways that are mentally ill and on the streets. Mm -hmm. He was asking why is the money not going to the people that are actually on the streets that mm -hmm. are mentally ill. Yeah, you know, those questions are 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 complex. Uh, of course, the money is going to the seriously mentally ill. Over half of Thrive's budget goes to the seriously mentally ill. And, and in, in addition to all of the money spent at the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, I mean, at least $30 million. Mm -hmm. And of course, the state and federal governments have jurisdiction over this as well. I think people, it's, it's a confusing uh, landscape, Certainly. Um, the health landscape, un unfortunately. And we all have to stumble through, like, who's responsible for what. But I want you to know that Thrive is subject to the same oversight that all the other agencies right. are subject to. So no one's trying to get away with anything here. Right. All right. I think we're just lo we're looking forward to that data that you say will be coming yes. out. I think it's really important to tell people how they can actually get help. It's a yes. number. Yes. 
NYC Well. And you know, every podcast uh, episode, we are talking about that number. We are pointing people to resources, talking about the different programs that help the elderly, our young people. We want people to know that the city offers a lot of resources and get people connected. And we're going to have that number on our website, as always, as oh, well. Good. You've been spending good. a lot of time in Brooklyn. Yes. So I want to talk about a, yes. a rumor out there that you yes. may be running for office mm -hmm. after your husband leaves office, that you'd be running for Brooklyn Borough President. Mm -hmm. What is the truth to those rumors? The truth is I, I have not announced that I'm running for Brooklyn Borough President. I am thinking about it, but there is no announcement, no plan. And um, a lot of people are talking, though. Certainly, and, mm -hmm. and you. So, so we got to hear that you are thinking about it. Mm -hmm. As for your husband, there's been some rumors out there that he may be looking for some. Obviously, he was looking to be president, mm -hmm. but now there's a rumor that he could possibly chair the Democratic National uh, D Democratic con uh, Committee moving forward. What's the plans for your husband when he leaves office? <laughs> well, I heard that first from you. Okay. <laughs> this morning, uh, there's no plan that I know of. <laughs> and I'll ask him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. Hey, we appreciate you coming in this morning to talk about this mm -hmm. and to um, to really raise the the bar here and talking about mental health, which I think there's a stigma around it that we can't it talk is. about it. And it now is. that you're doing this podcast, I'm really glad that we can talk about this moving forward. So please, I, I, want, I want your listeners to tune in. Mm -hmm. um, they can access the podcast um, anywhere, anywhere that they access other podcasts, through iTunes or through Spotify. Thank you. Hey, please you're welcome back know. anytime. Appreciate it. Thank you. And you heard it here. She's going to release those numbers somewhere on her website.